Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. Again, my name is Jeffrey Davis, and we continue to stream stories of entrepreneurship, leadership, and this economy. Uh, and we always love to speak with Tom McNulty, intellectual property attorney at Lando and Anastasi, uh, because, you know, intellectual property, that's one of the key words in Boston nowadays. So welcome back, Tom. Hi, it's always good to be here. Good. So uh, all I have to do is like turn you on. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, today I thought I would talk about, um, um, this has sort of arisen in my practice in a few different occasions lately, so I thought I'd talk about dealing with patent trolls as a uh, sort of a smaller uh, smaller company, you know, different steps you can take kind of in advance or once you've been notified. Um, and uh, for those who have not heard the term patent troll, um, if you haven't yet, you will. Uh, it's basically organizations that acquire patents and assert them um, basically looking to collect either license fees or, or settlement fees. They don't invent things themselves. They don't make things themselves. They really are kind of a drag on the economy overall. Um, all they do is assert patents. Um, and uh, if, if, if you start a new business and you haven't heard from them yet, like I say, you will. Uh, it's sort of a rite of passage <laughs> for, for a business to get their first troll suit. I, you know, uh, Tom, I, I, I know you didn't mean this as a political thing, but I almost feel daily that, you know, somebody sitting somewhere in some unfriendly country to, to the United States, and they sit there and they go, I got a new idea to screw with the American economy, <laughs> and the boss going, go for it. <laughs> And this is another one. I, I I I sort of hate to say this, but I think this one has been dredged up by uh, the the IP attorney field. The, oh no! The original, the original patent trolls. Uh, many of them were like former IP attorneys that decided that this was a good business model for them. Um, so That's it's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> and, and, really and a little nasty. embarrassed. <laughs> um, uh, it's kind of it's a particular threat in um, you know the high tech field, uh, e-commerce, you know streaming, uh, that sort of thing, um, because people you know a lot of these entities what they're doing is they're snapping up older patents um, and just construing them wildly broadly to cover um, you know techniques that have that have been adapted basically by everybody. So you know we're facing one right now. It, it deals with certain aspects of uh, video streaming. Um, you know, everybody's got a website, everybody's got videos embedded. Um, it's theoretically going to be applicable to almost anyone. Um, I've seen them in the past, a little bit older technology, but uh, somebody was trying to claim um, basically faxes, faxing technology, um, you know, years and years and years after it was invented. Um, so they're kind of a nuisance. Um, and unfortunately, the cost of IP litigation is is pretty steep and, and it sort of incentivizes a lot of people to cave and settle, uh, particularly if the settlement values are, are not that high. <coughs> um, so I guess the first thing I would say is if you're running a business and you get a cease and desist letter, uh, a notice of a patent, um, a request to you know consider taking a license or, or if you actually get sued, uh, first thing is contact an IP attorney. Um, don't put your head in the sand. Don't hope if you stay quiet, it'll go away. Um, you know, this is their business model. They will get back to you. Uh, and eventually they will sue if they don't hear something from you. Um, and an IP attorney can help you identify, you know, the strengths of the patent, maybe potential validity challenges to the patent. Um, I don't, I think we've discussed before, but there's a 2014 Supreme Court case that dealt with uh, patent ineligible subject matter. Um, that's particularly applicable to software and to, uh, you know, the high tech industry. Uh, and, and a lot of these patents that they're getting and asserting are, are predate the Alice decision and weren't written with, you know, keeping the validity in, in the face of Alice in mind. So a lot of these patents are susceptible to an Alice challenge. Uh, and, and that's a good one because that's something that can be done early in a litigation and potentially, you know, sabotage the whole thing for the, uh, for the patent holder. Um, patent attorney can also tell you, you know, the number of times it's been asserted, how far it's gone, what sorts of challenges have already been raised, what the, what the patent holder's response to the challenges were. Um, you know, we, a lot of times you'll see a motion to dismiss on validity grounds will almost immediately result in a quick settlement that, uh, that suggests that, uh, they don't want to really put the validity of their patent at risk. Um, so these are the sorts of things that can help you in, in either trying to negotiate, uh, a way out, a uh, settlement way out, or to, you know, come up with a strategy to fight. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you so, decide you, uh, go ahead. 
So let's say I register uh, my patent or a patent pending, whatever we call it. <laughs> I'm not a technology guy, clearly. Uh, somebody has already tried to register the name. Is there a way around it? Or do you um, just, are you just saying get out there early and, and, and don't let this get, don't be reacting? Well, I guess there's sort of two things. You certainly, you know, to the extent possible, you want to get out early in front on, on patenting your own products, your own inventions. Um, not everybody that's going to come after you is going to be a patent troll. And if you've got something that you can use offensively against somebody, um, it's always going to be better than if you're just plain fighting a defensive battle. Um, you know, obviously, if you're if you're really just starting out, there's going to be monetary concerns. You can't put all your all your money into an IP budget. You can't put all your money into a litigation budget. So there are some strategic decisions and some financial decisions that uh, you will have to come to. Um, one of the things you can consider, though, in terms of getting out in front of these things, um, there there's a few different few different ways to approach this proactively. Um, there's patent litigation insurance that is uh, available. It's it's sort of a relatively new product, um, and I've seen a number of different iterations. Uh, it can be defensive, so if you get sued uh, for patent infringement, the insurance will cover, you know, some some or all of your costs in fighting it, and perhaps some of all, or all of your costs in, you know, paying out any damage awards. Um, and uh, this can be particularly beneficial if you know if you get. If you get a smaller policy that only covers up to you know hundred thousand dollars of litigation expenses, that's a whole lot of stuff that can get done that you might not be able to um, you know pony up uh, out of pocket on on short notice. Um, so that gives you more of an ability to bring some of these early challenges and to really kind of drive the other side to a to a cheaper settlement. Um, you know, a lot of the policies they'll or a lot of the insurance you know offerings, it's it's you know certain amounts of coverage certain amounts of damage coverage. Uh, there is such a thing as offensive uh, litigation insurance um, where, where you get insurance to cover some of your costs if you decide to assert your own patents, because that's also a pretty expensive uh, proposition. Um, so that's, that's one of the things you can do to try to get some cost certainty uh, and, and you know, some proactive steps. Um, the other thing you can do is there are a number of groups that have formed and that are still forming um, to try to deal with the whole troll issue. Um, there's uh, a number of defensive patent aggregation firms. So they basically, they sign members up and as part of your membership, you agree not to sell your, well, with some of them anyways, you agree not to sell your, your patents to a patent troll, to a non-practicing entity. And um, one of the conditions um, that you sign contractually is if you do so, uh, everybody else that's a member of that group automatically gets a uh, royalty-free license. Um, so that, uh, you know, that, that prevents uh, patents from, you know, members within that group from being asserted against you down the road. Um, there's a few different organizations that do this, um, Allied Security Trust, uh, Patent Freedom, RPX Corporation, which is Rational Patent Exchange, uh, Lot Networks, they do these sorts of things. Uh, and some of them have a lot of companies and, and some pretty serious, you know, bigger companies, Teslas and, and IBMs and, and Microsofts and things like that are members of uh, one or several of these organizations. Um, uh, there's another one called Unified Patents. They're a little bit different in that you join and if, you know, if, if there's, if you get accused by a troll, uh, you bring it to their attention and they monitor kind of troll activity in, in select fields. They tend to be um, high tech focused and they've got different slots for different areas of technology. Uh, and they will independently um, on, a, uh, you know, on, on occasion, they will choose to independently bring a, an inter parties review uh, to the, to the patent office, challenging the validity of the patents. They do that on, on their dime. Um, they have all the decision-making authority. They will, they, they do say they will never settle in a way that involves anybody paying money. Um, but, um, you know, that's, that's a, a very useful thing. Um, if you've got somebody that's, that's potentially going to bring challenges to patents before they're asserted or as they're asserted against you, um, we're, you know, we're dealing with somebody right now that, um, uh, it's it's an entity that's asserting six or seven different patents, and two of them are already under review um, as a result of unified patents actions. 
Wow, it's a complicated world you live in, Tom. It is. Um, the nice thing with a lot of these aggregation, you know, defensive aggregation groups and things like that is um, their rates tend to be based on, on your revenue. And if you're a startup, if you're a small company, if your revenue stream is low, um, the rates are very reasonable. And, and you know, for some of them, it's, it's free uh, you know, until you hit a certain threshold uh, dollar level. Um, so these are all kind of steps that you can take proactively um, to try to make yourself a less attractive target and, and to sort of beef up your ability to respond uh, when the inevitable happens and somebody comes after you. Oh, good. Uh, we've been speaking. Uh, we've been speaking with Tom uh, McNulty, intellectual property attorney at Landau Anastasi. Uh, Tom, if someone wants to find you, how would they do that? Uh, they can find me certainly at our website. It's www.lalaw.com. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you may have to scroll down through the, uh, the old TV show <laughs> websites to get to us if you, if you just do an LA law search, but, um, uh, they can also reach me at, uh, T McNulty at lalaw.com. Okay, Tom, thank you for being on Radio Entrepreneurs. I look forward to our next interview and we will take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 